This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to Essentially Jacob, the Perfume Shrine. You guys, it is that time of the month, actually. Well, that went wrong. Time of the year. For me, it's the time of the month because Halloween for me is all year round. But it is that time of the year for those who only celebrate it once a year. I live Halloween every day. But it's that time of the year. It's Halloween season. I am all dressed in my spooky attire. This is the Super Jacob Fashion Bunker merch. You can get it in, um, in my merch store, only available until 31st of October. I wish it were scented. Could you imagine if it were Odorama? But I am feeling my spiritual oats. And for the occasion, I am going to give you a very carefully curated list of my top 10 Halloween perfumes. Now, this is not to be confused with my top five October perfumes because this is Halloween. And by Halloween, these top 10 perfumes are given certain attri attributes. Um, they remind me of certain things, of certain moods, characters, something that is spooky or scary that is connected to Halloween. So if we just think about Halloween, these are the 10 that rule my Halloween world. Okay, are you ready for this, you guys? Now, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube if you haven't already. And be sure to follow me also on my main Super Jacob channel where I live stream every Saturday and where I pre-record live in front of a virtual live audience most of the videos that you get to see on all my other channels, including Essentially Jacob. So thank you so much for subscribing to my channel, you guys. And I got all y'alls in the chat right now. What do you guys think in the chats? What is... What, which would be my top 10 Halloween perfumes? And all of, all of y'all in the comment section down below that are watching this video after it's been filmed live, let me know your top 10 Halloween perfumes. It's a very interesting topic to think about. It took me a long time. I was working on this for days and days and days, thinking, making my lists, taking stuff off a list, putting stuff back on. I wanted the perfect 10 perfumes for Halloween. What does this mean? Do you wear all 10 of them in one day? You could if you're crazy, but you don't have to. It can be a mood board to consider according to how you feel on Halloween night, or perhaps even how you want to dress on Halloween night. What does this mean? Let's get to it. Now, the first one, um, well, the first one is... <laughs> L'Or Bleu, because it represents a vampire. Okay, so for me, L'Or Bleu, you could check out my review of L'Or Bleu by Guerlain, the Eau de Parfum. And you could check it out on my Essentially Jacob channel. Um, this is a vampiric fragrance. Very vampire. Very vampire. Why? Check that out in the review. I actually made a whole review on this one explaining why this smells of how a vampire would feel. Uh, Jam asks, when is Halloween? Halloween is on the 31st of October. 31st of October. Um, now, number two. Since we had a vampire, my number two is, well, what does a vampire want? A vampire wants blood. And to me, a, it doesn't smell one-to-one -one of blood, but it gives you you know when you taste blood, if you cut yourself and you lick yourself, you taste blood, it tastes like metal. But if you see blood, it gives you emotions. It's hypnotic poison, eau de parfum, not eau de toilette. The eau de toilette is very, very different from the eau de parfum. Actually, I want to say that the eau de parfum and the eau de toilette are two different perfumes, really. But there's something about this cough syrup, cherry, and licorice in here that give you that type of blood taste in your mouth if you have a really bad cough and you keep kind of coughing up and up. It's it's a sickly, sickly fragrance. And of course, I've reviewed this one as well many years ago. And I do talk about vampires when I talk about this one too. So you could go check out that review. This one is intoxicating in the best of way and in the worst of ways. It If you want to spend your Halloween feeling bloody, you wear this perfume. It is a cloying, sickly, bloody smell. 
without it being metallic, because that's how blood tastes. How would I know? But that's how blood tastes, but that's not how blood feels. This smells how blood feels. Hypnotic poison, eau de parfum, blood. Oof. It's intense. It's intense. It's intense. Now, any guesses in the chats? I like the taste of blood, says Olisoto. Girl, you're missing iron. You have an iron deficit. <laughs> Frozen Luxury says, Eris by Paris Hilton is my number one for Halloween. Because you like to dress up like Paris Hilton for Halloween, Saya, don't you? <laughs> you're a vampire, says Gwen. Yes, I am. That's why I love blood. Oh, Ollie's a vampire, too. We all love blood, don't we? Uh, blood is memories, says Jack. Oh, and you have no, no memories? You said you don't bleed, Jack. Number three, <laughs> Jack keeps like going like, Ensemble mythique, ensemble mythique, ensemble mythique. Uh, well, let's wait and see. <laughs> but number three on my list, this is interesting. It's boudoir. And why boudoir? I've been thinking about, this is the one that took me almost the longest to figure out. Bride of Frankenstein. This is how she would smell. Hands down. Hands down. This is how she would smell. Vivian Westwood Boudoir. Bride of Frankenstein. With the frizzy hair, with that white gown, moving like that. You, you, you smell her through the screen. Black and white. We're talking Bride of Frankenstein from the monster, Universal Monsters. Man. Uh, you guys, does anybody know Boudoir? Boudoir and Bride of Frankenstein. It's, it, they, it's just a match made in heaven or hell. Oh, man. I just smell her powdery marigold presence with that tobacco and honeysuckle as she walks through. Because this is also a type of a Frankenstein of a perfume. It's... It's combining elements that don't usually match together, just like, you know, different parts of bodies used to create Frankenstein. But Bride of Frankenstein is slightly different. There's a softness to her, but also a precision to her. The 30s makeup, the look, the posture, very, very boudoir. Oh, my God. And it, it took me days. I was thinking about the Bride of Frankenstein. What perfume would she wear? And I had a whole list of them, and I was going through all of them, like this one, nah, maybe not, maybe that one, no, no, no. And then all of a sudden, after a couple of days, it, bam, it hit me. Of course, it's boudoir. You guys, hands down, this is Bride of Frankenstein. Oh, gives me the chills. Makes me love this perfume even more, and I already couldn't love it anymore. Just when I thought I couldn't love it anymore, Bride of Frankenstein connected to this one, and now it's like, okay, okay, I'm a slave to boudoir. Number four. Number four, so we, we've, we've seen a vampire, we've tasted blood, we've encountered the Bride of Frankenstein, but where did we encounter the Bride of Frankenstein? We encountered the Bride of Frankenstein and Dracula in a haunted mansion, and no other perfume smells more of a haunted mansion than Au Noir by Christian Dior. This green, gooey concoction liquid is dangerous black green liquid. This is how a haunted mansion smells. It's burning. It's haunted. It, it's treacherous. It scares you, but it allures, allures you as well. You know how it lures you in. Haunted mansions usually trick you into entering. That's exactly what Onoa does. And once you enter that haunted mansion, you realize that it's been burning all along and you're dead inside of it. Oh. oh, you know what? I can't. I can't resist it. I always have to spray it. Whenever, whenever I have it in my hands, I have this, this thing. It, it's, it's beyond. This is beyond mesmerizing. I am addicted to Au Noir. This is the haunted mansion. The fragrance of a haunted manor, haunted house, or haunted mansion. Au Noir. Moving on to number five. Number five, you somehow managed to survive 
the vampire. He did drink your blood, or she did drink your blood, but you kind of survived. Then um, you have, you're still bleeding, <laughs> leftovers. Bride of Frankenstein encountered you, mesmerizes you, almost killed you, and then you enter into the manor and you burn with it, as I said before. Now you're dead. Now you're a part of Halloween. It took you five perfumes to kick the bucket, but now you have surpassed that soil. You have moved into the realm of the dead. We have been within the living, but no more. What's on the other side? Death. Hello, Jack. We got Ensemble the smell of death. This, to me, is the perfume of death. Completely. This is death. This is the smell of death. But in a, in a very poetic way, in a very gothic way, in a very tortured, tormented soul type of way. Death is Ensemble Mythique by Guerland. The... Ambergris in this one, mixed with those roses, creates such a modern type of gothic fragrance that it just hurts the soul. It's death. Now you're, now you're in the realm of the dead. We are at number five. We're halfway through our Halloween journey. And halfway through the journey, we have entered the realm of the dead. Now we see things with different eyes. We feel with different emotions and we smell in a completely different way. And what do we encounter? Well, since the ever-living are technically undead, which are technically vampires, we now re-encounter that same vampire that we met at the beginning of our story, of our spooky Halloween story. But this time, the vampire cannot drink our blood anymore because we are dead. Now, when we encounter the vampire, remember what was the first time we smelled the vampire? This is the vampire that we smell when we are alive. But now that we're dead, that vampire smells very, very different. Now, the vampire is our sixth fragrance. Now we smell the vampire from a whole different perspective. Now we got Serge Luton's Tuberose Criminelle. Now you know the truth about the vampire. Now that you yourself have passed into the realm of the dead, you can smell a vampire for what they truly are. You know its secret. You know how a vampire lures its victims in, hypnotizes them to suck their blood. Now you know. You know the essence of the vampire, and you can only know the essence of the vampire once you're dead yourself. Tuberose Criminelle is a smell of a rotting, floral flesh. That vampire is a flower. That vampire is a um, camphorous creature that keeps trying to hide what it truly is by all those level layers of outfits, of garments, of powder, of posture. But deep down inside, they are a camphorous mess. The salicylates that a tuberose produces are very rarely utilized in fragrances, but they're utilized. The salicylates of the tuberose, which smells camphorous, is the key component of tuberose criminelle. The criminal pain of the forever living, the cursed creature, abandoned by God, you will live forever, that is your torment. That's how this smells. And you can only acknowledge it once you've passed into the realm of the dead. That's the vampire smell of the dead. At this point, you ask yourself, well, I'm already dead, so how worse can it get? Well, it can get worse because the spirit, you have just passed away. And as a spirit, you're just starting to learn to cope with this situation. You're seeing everything from, it's, everything is mirrored. With a vampire smelled like this when you were alive, now it smells like that. You see the world like this, now you see it like that. So, 
your spirit, your own spirit as a dead spirit goes through a delirious state. You, got, you go through delirium. And this is very Edgar Allan Poe. Now we touch base on the Edgar Allan Poe vision of delirium of the dead. And the delirious dead spirit smells of opium. We got Yves Saint Laurent, the pure perfume of opium. This one, delirium and visions. You're going through the delirious visions of a soul not understanding how time works anymore because time just stopped, boo-boo. You're dead. There, you're, you're no more burdened by the ticking of the clock, that ticking of the clock that Edgar Allan Poe describes in his books. All of that is gone. And because you, you're, you're, you're completely lost, there is no time, there is no anchor. You can't anchor yourself to anything. You are a loose spirit that's floating around everywhere and nowhere. You are somebody else's vision, but you're also having visions in a delirious state. That is opium by Yves Saint Laurent for the spirit that you is after you passed away. Mm. Ah, Rich Mitch says, I love the Gratte Ciel bottles, the, the skyscraper bottle for this one. Yeah, it's a beautiful one. Opium is our delirium. Now, we have acknowledged what we are. We're starting to deal with absence of time and we become curious. We want to go through this world, this new world that we have discovered as spirits on Halloween. Let's, let's revisit some mythological creatures, shall we? Well, the first one we encounter is a werewolf. And the werewolf has a very particular smell. This one is a funny one, you guys. But, sauvage. <laughs> the eau de toilette. The eau de toilette. Not the other concentrations. The eau de toilette of sauvage is the smell of a werewolf because it's carnal, it's brutal, it's, it's intense, it's, 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 comp it's very simple in its nature, but it has that complexity of just screaming at you like a werewolf would, and yet it's very sexual. And you realize, as a spirit, you also have sexual tensions, except now, strangely enough, you're attracted to a werewolf. And yes, there will be a walk of shame after you've had your little something something with the werewolf. The werewolf doesn't mind. The werewolf has contacts with both dead and living. A werewolf is kind of a creature in between. So the side of the werewolf that encounters you as the dead soul, the werewolf can see you as a werewolf if it wants. You, however, don't see the werewolf for that ugly, furry thing that it could be. For me, werewolves aren't ugly, by the way, but I'm just saying. As a li you're, you're not alive anymore. You don't perceive things the same way anymore. The werewolf is an energy. And it's a highly erotic sexual tension. And that is sauvage. The eau de toilette. Because it, it's more raw and brutal than all the other concentrations. Yes, Gwen Lee. Very much like Hugh Jackman. And Louis says, yes, yeah, sauvage. Jack says, my sexual tensions have always been spiritual. Nothing like uh, doing it with, with deities, <laughs> darling. Werewolf equals wet dogs, says Edu Gomez. Mm, yes, yeah, sauvage. I'm telling you. Jack says, yes, of course. Werewolf smells of sauvage. I'm telling you guys, I've been thinking about this for days and days and days. My Halloween list and journey through Halloween. So as a dead spirit we get sexually aroused by the werewolf. All right, now. <laughs> There's more to this story, however. And we've had our encounter with the werewolf. We've enjoyed it, but we're back to our questioning, our lack of existence or existence. And we think to ourselves, hmm, who can we talk to to understand our position better as a spirit? Because, yes, we are dead, but we still have a knowledge and a conscience of our existence. We, we, we still think, we're still, there's a conscience within us that makes us think and rationalize. So, 
who could we talk to to maybe bring in a bit more logic into this abstract lack of existence that we concocted for ourselves? Who do we talk to? Let's talk to somebody who has been dead and came back. Well, nothing better. Where's my perfume for this one? Nothing better than to talk to a zombie. Because you might think, well, what if my spirit goes back into my body? Will I be a zombie again too? Maybe I should ask us, do I want to go back inside a body? Do I? Well, if I do, the best person to talk to would be the zombie. Now you think the zombie is a brain dead creature, but wait, the zombie looks like a brain dead creature only to the living, but you're not alive anymore. The zombie has a totally different appearance to the dead. They're not dumb at all, but their smell is very, very particular. It's nauseating. It is very difficult to bear. It's alluring from a distance, but the closer you get and the more you just want to vomit. Joy by Jean Patou, the Eau de Parfum, also the Eau de Toilette, but Joy is, is the one. Joy is, is the smell of a zombie, and especially if you haven't sprayed it for a long time, like if you don't use it for a long time, and the perfume dries out on the spray nozzle a little bit. Ugh. It's like dried out barnacles in the sun they, that start rotting, and there's that smell of ocean and salt and decay. This is the most indolic perfume I've ever smelled. It is, it, it's the smell of a zombie. <laughs> it's, and I love it. <laughs> I just, I love it, love it, love it. Oh, you guys. Okay. This is it. This is it. This is the smell of a zombie. And the zombie tells you, you know, the only way you can really go back to the living and be eternally remembered in a physical form, in a physical shape, is if whoever is still alive finds your body and embalms you, covers you up, patches and bands, and you turn into a mummy. And the mummy is our missing link. And that's the 10th fragrance. So that's the end of our journey. That is the moment when the dead get to choose. Either remain dead as a spirit or come back to life, but in a very weird way, tied in that prison of bandages, laying stiff for all eternity as a physical presence on earth, but without being able to move. That's the mummy I envision. That's the fear the dead have of coming back because that's the only way they can come back spiritually is as a mummy. But the smell of the mummy now, that one took me ages to figure out. This is the smell of a mummy. 31 Rue Cambon, Eau de Toilette. Eau de Toilette, not Eau de Parfum. The labdanum, the sweet, suckle smell of rotting elegance. It's sophisticated, it's rich. This is the haute couture fragrance. A mummy is in a sarcophagus adorned with gold and riches, with all the power of the world. With It's an emblematic symbol of taking with you the most opulent of materialism. And yet, what a sickly paradox. All those riches surrounding you, and yet you are tied up, bond forever, you cannot move. And all of those riches are literally one hand grip away, but you can't touch them. Some of them are on your body, but you are there physically. You're even aware that you're there, but you cannot move. That's the smell of this one. This is, when you s spray 31 Rue Cambon, that opulence of a mummy, is all, you're drenched in it. And yet you can't grasp it because it's a perfume. You, you smell these visions of this opulence, but you are in a cage. You cannot catch them. You cannot grasp them. They are 
just there, right at your reach, but you cannot grasp them. You cannot touch them. You can only smell them. You can only, they keep tantalizing you. And the mommy realizes, ah, uh, was it worth it? Was it worth the game? Was it worth the journey? Because now here I am, back in a material body, and I cannot move. Thank you so much for the super chat. Five Please write my eulogy <laughs> anytime, Thank baby. You. Let me know how spooky do you want it. And then the mummy realizes one important thing. The sun is coming up. Halloween is over. Everything freezes. No more thoughts. The dead have no more thought. They have nothing else to think, to say, or to move. Until next year. And then one year, one year passes and Halloween comes again. A new story begins. And the story begins with a mummy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let's hope to be together again next Halloween when we try to figure out how the mummy evolves and moves into the realms of the living again. Or will it not? We don't know. That's a little cliffhanger for you. This was season one of Jacob's essential perfume Halloween. Let's see what season two brings us. Every good TV show. It takes a year for them to produce a new season. So I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this video and my selection. Shop Queen says, I love when Jacob takes us on these olfactory journeys. So poetic. Thank you so much, Shop Queen. Um, <laughs> thumbs up for this, guys. Bravo. Thank you so much, Ali. So, yeah, thumbs up the video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. Ancient Egypt mummy with lots of gold, says Gwen. Lol, it's too late to leave. I've been consumed. I tried, says Ali. <laughs> Rotting elegance, says Gwen Lee. LOL. Yes. Rotting elegance. That's exactly what a mummy is. Nicole says, Nicole Papinchuk, what a journey. Loved this so much. Thank you guys. That's why I say, don't get scared on my main channel. We, you know, we talk fashion and all that stuff. When I say, let's do a perfume video, people are like, ah, perfumes, I don't know. You know, when I talk about perfumes, there's more than just saying, little flower, this smells like a flower, this smells sweet, this smells... You know, that's the last thing we talk about here. When we talk perfumes, we go on a journey. We go on a journey. We go on a journey. Alina says, Dacov has made me believe in zombies, vampires, and that, like him, you can live to be 300 and still look young. Thank you, darling. 237 years old. Or 337 years young. And I look not a day over 150. Um, I need Dacov to write my eulogy the same way he describes perfume. Thanks, Unique. <laughs> In my head, zombie. Ah, oh, Jack is uh, cranberries. Yeah. I love that song so much. I can't sing it now for obvious reasons. For, for two obvious reasons. Copyright claim, and I can't sing. Tom says, Yas the Sauvage. Alina says, Dio Sauvage de Toilette is my boyfriend's fave. Uh, D. Ashley says, Lol, well, I just bought Sauvage de Parfum and I'm feeling like an animal tonight. I'm telling you, Ashley, it's where it's at. It's where it's at. Zon Zoe. Zon <laughs> Don't do it. Sobi says, opium is one of my favorite perfumes. And there you go. So you are in a delirious state of mind most of the time. It's very telling of who you are and your nature. Isn't that amazing? Edu repeats again, werewolf, wet dog. I mean, everything is wet when a werewolf comes your way, I want to say. <laughs> So yeah, Jack's saying that uh, sexual tensions have always been spiritual. Nothing like doing it with deities. If the deities want to, you know, mingle with y'all, then it's all good. But, you know, they can be very moody. They can be very moody, very picky, very picky, the deities. Let me see if there's... A I'm loving this, says the CC spy down the rabbit hole, says Jack. Which means says vintage opium is true perfumery. Oh, totally true perfumery. So I, I'm glad you, you all seem to have enjoyed it so much. Thank you guys so much. I'm telling you, we are counting down to Halloween in elegance and style, darling. Let the others be ratchet. Let them bathe the moon. We're going to perfume ourselves at the moon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Never forget to never give up on perfume love. Subscribe to my channel and see you all soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.